What's going on guys? So today we're gonna rank the Dragon Star Arena weapons uh, in a tier list from the worst to the best. So do keep in mind this is from a PvP perspective, so this is not gonna have anything with PvE related whatsoever. Uh, so let me tell you what these all these are. So this is gonna be the Master's Sword and Board. This one right here, just the shield. This one's gonna be the Master's Dual Wield. Uh, this two-handed weapon is gonna be the Master's Two-Handed Sword, uh, or you know the two-handed weapon. This is going to be the, obviously the Master's Bow, this is going to be the Master's Resto Staff, and this is going to be the Master's Destro Staff. So, you know, as I rank them, I'm going to put the skill on the screen, so I'm going to show you what the skill does and explain why I think it is good, or, you know, kind of why it, it is there. So, let's get right into it. So, for the first uh, weapon, I'm going to put this on C tier. This is going to be the Master's Resto Staff. So, the Master's Perfected Resto Staff, it is pretty decent for a healer, but for anything else that really is not good, so basically what it does is it adds 877 magic for the two piece. So this is basically just putting on your on your character if for the perfected version. It is definitely pretty decent to have a little bit more max magic, but again it's only really for healers. So the initial heal of grand healing invigorates you and your members affected for 4 seconds, restoring 117 magicka and stamina every 1 second. So basically what healing springs does, it is an 8 meter radius and it basically puts an AoE heal on the ground. Uh, it could be good for, you know, uh, a group play PvP for a healer, but for really anything that does a lot of damage, you know, a, a, a PvP, like trying to kill people, this isn't going to be for you. This is what kind of why it's on the C tier. Uh, definitely is good for a healer though, but for, you know, for me or for really anybody that PvPs, besides a healer, obviously, uh, this set, I don't think he's really that good for PvP at all. So next, we're going to go into the Master's Two-Handed Weapon. So the Master's Two-Handed Weapon, it adds 1190 physical penetration, and it increases the direct damage Cleave deals by 1550 for each enemy in its cone. So what Brawler or the Morph of Cleave does is focus your strength into a mighty swing dealing physical damage to enemies in front of you. So the radius is 7 meters, which is okay range. It's not too bad, uh, but you gain a damage shield that absorbs damage for 6 seconds. Each enemy hit increases the shield strength by 50% up to 300%. So overall, this skill is okay. It's, it's very close range and is kind of wonky in actual gameplay. Having the extra damage, like increasing the direct damage of cleave for each person in the AoE sounds good on paper, don't get me wrong, I've tried this actual in actuality on the game. It did okay, uh, it was mediocre. Uh, definitely if you get a 3, 4, 5 people, you know, stacked up in a little small area, cleave will definitely start smacking, hitting for 6, 7, 8k in an AoE, which is very, very high damage. But overall, it's very inconsistent for single target play, uh, trying to kill one person, it's very, very... It just hits like a wet noodle to be honest it's pretty decent but it's just that's why it's kind of at the b tier it's okay but it's just not top tier so next we have the puncturing remedy so basically what the master sword and board does is adds three percent healing taken for the two piece uh for, for the uh perfected version uh when you deal damage with a punk with puncture you heal for 6130 that's what it says on the skill and you gain physical and spell resistance equal to the amount of the healing or overhealing done for five seconds. Uh, so what punk or the morph of puncture is, I think the best morph is going to be pierce armor. So it basically applies minor breach and major breach to the enemy, reducing their overall resistances by about 9,000, which is some insane penetration. So overall, I think this is very, very good in dueling. Uh, but in open world, I really didn't like it. I feel like having to always keep up pierce armor to just get the heal. Uh, it's kind of uh, tedious and a nuance. But definitely getting all the resistances for the amount healed is very, very nice. Especially in dueling, you could be a medium armor and, you know, duel. Like, for example, I know a lot of Stamplars use this because you can, you know, backbar this set. Uh, so for Stamplar, you can get close to 30k resistances in medium armor with this with this set. It's actually really, really good in duels. Uh, because not only do you get the healing and the armor to increase your tankiness, but you also reduce their armor. So if this thing heals you for about four to 5,000, you're going to get 5k armor, which is basically the same amount as, you know, having major resolve. So you're basically getting 10k armor for, you know, having armor buff and pierce armor. So overall, this set is pretty decent. I like it for duels, but not for open world. Uh, it's kind of just tedious, like I was explaining, and, you know, just trying to hit it on everybody to keep up the... Uh, penetration up it, it's just a nuance so next we have the master's bow uh, 
Now, I think the Master Bow is overall pretty decent. So what it does is for the Perfected version, it adds 103 weapon damage. And for the for the other bonus, it increases your weapon damage by 330 against targets affected by your Poison Arrow. That's very important, your Poison Arrow. So somebody can't hit them with Poison Injection and you get the buff from the Master's Bow. So overall... I think the best morph is going to be Venom Arrow. Poison Ejection used to be the best morph because it dealt, dealt a lot more damage the lower health they got. It still is pretty decent, but I think having the Interrupt, you know, for a lot of people using Jesus Beam, you know, Radiant Oppression, a lot of people using Dark Deal on Sorks, uh, basically, you know, having any Interruptible skill, this is awesome. Even stopping res people from reviving people, uh, this skill is very good. So basically all it does is you uh, hit them with the arrow and... It, put the dot on them pretty much and if they are you know trying to revive somebody trying to cast a channel time ability uh, they will get set off balance and are stunned for three seconds until they break free so this skill it used to, this used to be a s tier it still is pretty good um the main classes that are going to use this is going to be definitely Stamblade. Uh, but i think piercing mark on Stamblade is a lot better now you could always still run venom arrow just to get the weapon damage but i feel like with the meta the way it shifted uh i don't think master's bow is very good anymore not at least s tier in my opinion it's definitely solid um but it's just not it's kind of underwhelming especially for the stamina sustain uh with how with so many cl classes having cleanse uh trying to keep up the poison injection to get the 330 weapon damage is very very hard especially in open world pvp so that's kind of why it dropped uh it used to be s tier but it's not anymore in my opinion so next we are going to get into the master's destro staff so I think it is honestly A tier, but I'm going to put it on S tier for a few reasons. So basically, especially the, perf the perfected version is S tier 100%. It adds 103 spell damage for the perfected as well as reduces the cost of destructive touch by 10% and increases your spell damage by 600 for 4 seconds after activating it. So for the most part, uh, classes that are going to use this are going to be like Magic Necromancers, Magical Wardens, sometimes Magic Nightblades. And sometimes maybe even magic sorks, but I feel like the main classes are going to be magic warden and magic necromancer and even magic nightblade to some extent. The main reason why is mo both of those classes don't have a consistent offensive stun, uh, in particular the magic warden and the magic necromancer. So the fire staff is the only staff that provides a actual stun, the frost staff provides a snare, and the lightning staff provides AOE burst, uh, like you know, like like lightning, you know, it's AOE. So it's it's okay, uh, but the only staff that provides a CC and actual knockback is going to be the fire staff, and that's kind of the one I'm talking about. Both the the so if I had to rank them, it would be the fire staff first, the lightning staff second, and the ice staff third. Uh, just simply because the ice staff does provide a snare, and it's okay, especially if you're zerging somebody down, but it's not good in uh, you know a one v x you know outnumbered scenario because it doesn't provide. Uh, a timeable burst window to actually kill people shock version of this it does an aoe damage and it definitely hits people hard this definitely could be paired up with the magic warden so they can use both the lightning staff and the fire staff uh for the most part you're probably going to be using the lightning staff on a magic warden just because of the aoe damage you know the deep fissure and you know trying to get aoe pressure but they do lack a stun uh the only stun that they'll really have is going to be the arctic blast or the AoE snare, the ice AoE snare that's going to snare them. Uh, it doesn't stun them, but uh, it does help, you know, land some bursts. But the Arctic Blast is going to be your main stun if you're going to use the Lightning Staff version. But then the Fire Staff is going to be your main CC. You can still use Arctic Blast, obviously, but it's just Arctic Blast isn't offensive. It's more or less defensive. Um, so having an offensive stun with Art with the Destructive Clinch is going to be the best. So after testing this on Magic Necromancer, I feel like the, the Master Destro Staff is very, very solid. Uh, it's almost a necessity, I think, uh, for especially Magic Necromancer, just to get the extra spell damage. I mean, if you have the perfected version, you're getting 700 spell damage. That's a lot of spell damage, especially running this on the front bar. This is going to give you, you know, 700 spell damage for four seconds. It's quite a bit. That's, you know, more than Alchemist. So, uh, it, but it does kind of feel underwhelming sometimes. I mean, you'd think that having 700 spell damage is going to make you hit like a, like a god or something. Um, but, you know, in actuality, it doesn't. Uh, so I don't understand why that, you know, is the way it is, but it's whatever. So, and finally, we have the Master's Axe. So this is going to be S plus tier 
thousand tier level if you can put it up there so it is the best dragon star arena weapon in my opinion so it's good for dueling it's even good for open world one vx so kind of what the uh, master's duel does is it adds weapon critical for the two piece for the perfected version and so twin slashes that's a dual wield skill and it deals 1635 more damage for each hit of the initial attack and bleed so this skill basically uh makes makes your bleed hit crazy crazy hard um so blood craze is going to be the better morph i think this is going to provide you some healing back as well as doing a dot for you so basically you lacerate your opponent and cause them to bleed over 10 seconds so every single tick it ticks for one second every so for once every one second for 10 seconds right so you're going to get an extra 1600 damage on blood craze every single tick not only that but the burst from blood craze uh it does initial damage on blood craze plus the the uh perfected singing slash it's going to increase the damage of that by 1635 so you can hit an initial three 4k uh, blood craze just from the initial burst of it and then after that the dot is going to tick for 1635 more uh, and for right now during markarth uh, you can proc a bleed off of blood craze and also procs your enchantments as well so you can have literally blood craze up with a poison up and procing a bleed from the axes uh, and that's just a lot of damage especially buffed with malakath that's some crazy damage that's why this skill in this set from dragon star arena is so powerful so particular classes that this is good on this is going to be good on stamina templar stamina sork and stamina dk but for the most effective i think it's going to be stamina sork and stamina dk D sam dk's have dots uh, with Noxious Breath and Venomous Claw, so this pairs very, very well with them, especially in dueling. This is very, this hits uh, obnoxiously hard, especially it's it's almost uh, just somewhat uh, cancerous in a way of how hard this hits. It doesn't really take much skill to hit Blood Craze and you know put on dots. It's kind of like you're fighting a trial boss to be honest, but it is super strong. For Stam Sork, uh, you can basically use this with Crystal Weapon, and you know have this as your spammable, and you could literally run dual wield and sword of board on a stamp sword and not even have to run 2h uh and definitely hit very very hard with the blood craze a uh, next patch i feel like this is going to kind of drop off since axes won't bleed anymore but uh it still is going to be pretty decent especially for swords uh so it'll be overall decently good but just not as good as it is now just the main thing that really makes blood craze or the the perfected master's dual wield hit so hard is because it can proc the bleed uh, if you're running an axis, obviously, if you're not running an axe, it's not going to be as strong, in my opinion. But if you're running dual axes with this, this is going to slap so hard, and this is just going to melt people's health bar. So overall, that's really it for the uh, tier list. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Tell me, you know, if I misplaced something, or tell me your thoughts on it. Because this is obviously my opinion and, you know, kind of my experience in the game. So I'd like to hear you guys' you know, thoughts on this as well. And, you know, that's it for me, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.